Okay, so here's the did I get all the rust out of it? Yep. Hey folks, I thought I'd give you a little better idea of how tall this thing is. I'm a whopping five foot six. I know I'm pretty big, but you can see how tall this circular saw blade is compared to me. I can't wait to get this thing finished so I can show y'all. Hey right, folks, here's a little trick for you. If you're trying to determine the distance between each one of these little blocks, if you will, put them all together so the position you want, they're touching all the way across. This is what I call simple math for people who don't like to use calculators and such. All right, put them all across. Figure out what you got left over here on the end. In this case, it's two and a half inches. I've already gone ahead and divided two and a half into one, two, three, four, five spaces. That gives me exactly a one half inch piece of block, a little stick. So go back through and put your stick in place all the way across. When I get to the other end, that last little hockey puck, whatever you call this thing, should be on the edge of the board. Look there. Right on the edge. Hope you can use that one. I know I scratch my head a lot of times trying to figure that out. Okay, so I found center on these guys. And I'm going to poke a little hole in them. But make sure when you do that, you use a big enough hammer so that you can poke a hole. I'm just kidding. You don't need that silly hammer. take these little spacers out and live action twisty letter mounts look at that this thing is just a mock-up to get my spacing and etc etc but it works okay guys I'm pretty stoked by now you can probably figure out what I'm gonna do here with this uh, circular saw blade but um, there's one thing you don't see and don't understand about this a little story quick story my father one of his crazy quirks was he used to like to spell people's names backwards it was one of his things he did all the time and he did it with ours too so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach this board to that saw blade I'm not gonna tell you how I'm gonna make it do this yet but here's the idea as you can see these letters are rotating when they get to a certain point there's the tribute to my father, Elkni. That's what he always called us. It's pretty, pretty silly, but he'd get a huge kick out of it. So that's what we got, guys. These are just extra weights that I'm going to have to put in there somehow to make these letters flip and hold the position. But I'm pretty stoked. 
pretty happy with it so far. It's a mock-up, it's a prototype. I see that it'll work. Let's keep going. Rock and roll. Okay, folks, I think that's enough for day one. Uh, just remember, what looks like Hinkle is also Elk Nine. Now stay tuned because there's going to be one, maybe two more videos for this crazy thing. Uh, I got some surprises that I'm going to pull on this one that I hope I don't disappoint you with. I'm pretty sure I won't. Uh, as always, we thank you for watching. Give me a like, subscribe. Leave a comment if you'd like. Share the video. Again, thanks, guys, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Okay, folks. So here's something I made myself. This is my version of a track saw. And this is the piece that attaches to the plywood. Let me get the other half here. Simple dovetail design, slides through just like so. Let me make sure you can see it. Slides through. Well, it's supposed to. <laughs> when it's clamped in place, it does. And what you're looking at here is a piece of marine plywood that I'm going to use to make these backer blocks for these letters. I'm going to rip this off. Then I'm going to go to the table saw and I'm going to cut it to the lengths I need. And we're going to continue making these flippy do signs. Simply line up your line. I added an eighth inch for the width of the blade. Typically you would put the the uh, track saw portion on the other side so that you don't have to figure in that eighth inch. But because I'm only taking a six inch strip here, I don't want to have the saw fall on the floor when I get done cutting this. Just like that. Straight as an arrow. <laughs> Two foot.
what I'm doing is cutting this down into more manageable pieces. And the two foot dimension is for something you'll see in a little bit. It's actually, as a little hint, it's, it's what's going to make that saw blade go round and round. I produce a balance here where I'm talking enough, but I'm showing you that I'm actually doing something, building something. So this piece that I'm cutting here is, is going to be the backer board that the letters are actually going to mount to. So when they are mounted on the wheel, they'll be on this board and they'll be spinning. This is not the block mount that I'm going to use. I'm going to use the block. Oh, there's an L. I almost lost my L. Get it? Lost the L. He asks, here he is, my helper. He's in the shop again. Hard at work, aren't you, bud? Oh, good boy. What I'm doing is going by that three so that I have the same measurement each time. And by putting that crosshair on there, it shows me where center is. And after I nip these corners off, I'll still be able to find the center line through the corner for laying it out on the base. With that center line. I'll drill a hole through here. That will show me that hole there. Hole through here, hole through there. Then I can start playing with these guys again. Moving forward. More of the same. Got a helper in the shop today, a real helper. She's a little camera shy, but she's in here. Say hi, Lisa. Hi, Vernon. There you are, folks. Proof that my wife does come out in the shop and help. It's always a pleasure when she does. She's an artissimo. She's painting the wheel for me. Because painting is one of my least favorite things to do. We call her the finishing department. So if anything is messed up, it's usually her fault. Just kidding, it's usually my fault. No power. Forgot to plug it in. Here we go. make a little adjustment but that works okay folks I don't know if in the last video if I used a big enough hammer so this is a 20 pound sledgehammer I think that'll be enough to start these holes with Mike could do this without a drill bit with this thing this is just silliness That was a gift from Elmer at Double O Builders in New York. Gave that to me one Christmas. An Amish fella. Good guy. Alright, so the object here is to drill holes in the center of each one of those crosshairs. Then bring this backer board over. And now you see where 
that crosshair line becomes important because their center line on the backer board, their center line on this board. I'm going to line up center line to center line, put my wood spacers in, and I'm going to continue that, and I'm going to poke the hole that I drill here through the backer board so that I can locate center. Then I'm going to take these lazy Susans and I'm going to calculate the distance from center to the edge and I'm going to draw another line 90 degrees this way and this way that'll tell me where the center of that lazy Susan is then I can mount the lazy Susan and start drilling holes to line up these other boards cool Whoops. I wondered if that was tight enough. So you can see I've got them all on here, all spaced out. And now I'm going to go through and mark the hole locations for the bottom, or the part that mounts to the backer board. Then I'm going to go back through and I'm going to drill all those holes out. <clears throat> Pardon me. Then I'm going to put the letter backer boards back in position and drill those through the holes that I drilled through these. This is all a complicated bunch of rigmarole really, but we'll get her. Okay, so while beginning to do these holes, it occurred to me that that crosshair is going to line up perfectly with those holes which will position me dead center. So I'm not going to drill those holes in the baseboard. I'm going to drill the sneak hole in the side. But that's it. It pays to pay attention to what you're doing when you're building something this complex. And Picasso continues.
Michael. <laughs> Pretty nice. Come out pretty nice. Who's right there? Okay, y'all. I don't know if you figured this out yet, but what if I do this? What if I put this in the center? And I put these in here like this. If I can get them to stand. All the way around. And I take this other one that looks just like it and I put it up on here. Now I'm sure you can figure out what I'm building. Of course the spokes are a little too tall but that's where we're going with this. Remember I said this is marine plywood. There's another clue. Folks, it's uh, the second day here Saturday was yesterday, today is Sunday, and this is what we got with these things. Off camera I did some more math, laid out some more lines. It looks confusing, but <clears throat> I'm not real happy with this stop sign shape, so I think I'm going to take it to the old bandsaw and cut a circle and make it more like a wheel. And let me show you what I've done over here. So this old table saw, I need a circle cutting jig so what I've done is attached a 2x4 under here with a clamp attach just a little run out piece to the 2x4 I got these clamps in place a little leg on here just for some support and what we're going to try to do is set that wheel on there with a screw at that point and spin that around and make a good circle wish me luck now I do have a uh, circle cutting jig for my trim router but I don't want to dig that thing out and unhook the base and put that thing on there I'm going to try to do something a little different let's see how it works out okay folks I ran it in just a little bit but we're going to continue with the camera rolling to show you how this is working <laughs> shabby all right guys let's see if we can make this work plywood soon to be straight I have to pound them into submission here Look, he 
here, looky here. I'd say we got ourselves a water wheel if I screw them in place. So what I'm doing here is I'm offsetting them this direction. Every paddle, every spoke, every vein, however you want to say it. That way I can line up the edge with the line that I'm using and keep them straight. Both top and bottom. Now we just connect the dots. And we'll put in another screw on each one. Uh-oh, Vernon missed one. Right here. No problem. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Who says a hillbilly can't make a wheel? <laughs> Even if it does have flat spots, it'll still go around. Alright y'all, let's give it something to spin on here. What I did is trace the outside diameter of this located center that way. Uno. Dos. Trace. El Foro or Cuatro. Okay, so we gotta have some threads on our axle. You didn't think I was gonna do this by hand, did you? Little Earl. Not actually cutting the roll I'm using, but for one thread it'll work. Two threads. Looky there. Just like that, we got the corkscrew made out of metal. Yeehaw! Here we see Lisa Picasso in her native environment doing a bang up job on that there water wheel. Excellent work Lisa, wave to the people. <laughs> Thank you. Okay y'all, on to the next thing. Now we're going to build a base for this contraption. Pressure three to two by fours, and a little bit of pulp, and maybe I can pull it off.
don't have the bracing on the legs yet, but you get the idea of what I'm doing here. The axle will continue through here. The saw blade will be here. So I decided to make a bigger water wheel, to go ahead and make a bigger water wheel. Um, because this one here obviously is going to be too small. <clears throat> but I wanted to show you something that was kind of a little humorous. I made a boo boo. I'm human. I'll prove it to you. So you can see here we have two water wheels. One is the correct diameter, one is the mistake. And that mistake is. Uh, when cutting out those wheels and you want 16 segments the overall angle is 22 and a half but you have to divide 22 and a half by one half to give you the correct angle to make a 16 segment circle this is 22 and a half multiplied by 2 you do the math it's too harsh of an angle I only get 8 segments but we're going to keep going. We got her. No problem. So I decided to use a biscuit joiner to uh, put these guys together with. I'm making these marks to keep things in line. as we go and hopefully this will keep this thing together just random no rhyme or reason to where I'm putting them Okay, so let me show you what I got here. This is the first hole cut for the first biscuit. I don't like how low this is. So I've added this little block to my bench. Some people would be appalled I screwed it right to the bench, but that's the way I roll. All right, so I cut a corresponding hole because I had to to line it up. Then I cut the next one using the block. That puts it more in the center. I'm much happier with that. That way I set the, what's this tool called again? Biscuit joiner. On top of the shim or block or whatever you want to call it, bring this to the side of it and then run the tool in. That puts this slot more in the center. So I've got one that's a little cattywampus, but I got a matching one for it. So we're good. Y'all have seen my crazy vacuum attachment before goes out the door out the floor underneath but what I'm using this for well let me just show you how it works let me turn it on a little noisy <clears throat> pardon me what I'm doing when I use the biscuit joiner I'm angling the exhaust from the biscuit joiner right at that vacuum attachment and you'll see that it pretty much takes care of everything no dust flying all over no fancy setups just good old American ingenuity <laughs> okay so when I'm running the biscuit joiner in with these little blocks it's it's wanting to walk on me I don't know if you can see that with my arm see 
move the camera a little. It, it's wanting to pull on me. So I've added this block. I'm going to put the biscuit joiner right next to it. That way it can't pull me to the left as I'm running the blade in. Still going to line up these marks. Did you see that? I caught that before it hit the floor. I'm going to line up these marks here. These guys. With the center line on the biscuit joiner. And we're going to run them through. Cool beans! Okay folks, we got a little change in the setup here. As I was working, I happened to look down right there. The manufacturer has graciously put in two holes in that plate. So I'll screw this thing to my right to my bench and now it's solid all I have to concentrate on is this board and as you can see we still have movement but that thing is solid woohoo I'm loving it okay so let me show you the glue up we got going on ratchet strap clamp fancy schmancy concrete block weights I took my pipe clamps apart. There's the tail pieces. That way I can put some down pressure on this and make it remain flat. And you can see I got some squeeze out here and there. I think we're good. That's one half. Little trick. Tape block. Show you what length to cut your board. Steppity step up. Say nerve wracking.
Good to go. Get you one of these. You need one, trust me. Supervisor, on scene. Yellow goop. Make bigger, more bigger. Now we got a water wheel. Getting heavier, folks. <clears throat> That's for sure. Look like it to me. Ooh, that one's off. Helps if you measure from the same point each time. <laughs> Now we're going to make this mark. I don't know why we're making this mark, because I'm going to fasten it with a screw before I flip it over, but it never hurts to have a little insurance policy. Beginning to waste much as that we 
deal over there with the teeth on it. Yes, yes. Silly rabbit. If I keep walking around, the thing will turn. <laughs> yeah, what a nut. These marks will put me just about center of the area that I have underneath to uh, grab the screw with. You gotta stick your tongue out just right to do this when you're trying to figure these numbers. Every professional knows that. Alright. We'll do the same thing. Inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter. Sometimes there's a little bit of tedium when you're doing things like this. Repetitive work. Good thing we got the finishing department on standby to get rid of all these pencil marks. I'm sure she'll be delighted to hear that she gets to paint this thing again. <laughs> Painting is probably one of my least favorite things to do with these things. better. Man, that's right in that knot. We're going to move. You got to use your belly to do this. Good thing I got a big one. All right, I'm not going to bore you with that anymore. Now I know I said I was holding this with my belly and you all think that's a joke. But I'm really not. My belt buckle is right here. And that belt buckle is acting like a vice to hold this thing down so that I can put two hands on this drill. Belt buckle clamp, y'all. 
I just thought of something that's funny. You might not think it's funny, but I do. That's why I can't be one of the cool kids and have my pants sagging in the back. I need the belt to hold my pants up so I can hold my stuff still. <laughs> Means we need to get more young thugs into woodworking so they got to wear a belt to keep their pants up. Here we go. That old AC is just a cranking in here. It's about 10 o'clock Sunday morning. And it's already 85 degrees outside in North Kakalaki. It's a whole lot better than throwing snowballs. And there's half of the upgrade. Let me flip it over so you can see the size difference here. Get a little better perspective. <clears throat> it's going to be a little bit bigger. Let's see. About a foot bigger in diameter all the way around. This was a 21 inch diameter, that's a 36. Pretty confident that's going to work. Tape measures work, but sticks work better to make it faster and easier. Sticks with marks. Story sticks, they're called. This is a simplified version of one. <clears throat> I'm going to show a story stick in one of my bits and pieces episode to show you how that works. How a real story stick works. It's quite an interesting story. <laughs> that was pretty corny. Oh well. grain in this wood is making my drill bit veer off. I start it on the crosshair and it pushes it that way. That's because my bit isn't the sharpest <clears throat> and because I'm not starting a pilot hole. See that little tap helps hold it in place. Still wandering. Drill wandering. We don't like drill wandering. Oh well. Oh, and one more thing. We can add this one to the blooper reel. Like I told you in the beginning, I'll tell you about my mistakes. Let me spin this camera around here and make sure you can see what I'm trying to show you. You see these little cleats here that I've put in? These guys. Well, they need to line up with these cleats over here. And when I put this side in, I didn't line it up with the other side. So I had to whack all of these off in a mad dash before the glue dried and put me in a bad way. But we did it, we got them back off. There's a happy mistake for you. All right, thanks y'all. 
We'll catch you on the flip side. Okay, folks, here's the finished product. I guess I lost the video footage of building the stonework and assembling that thing outside, but if you've seen the finished video, you know exactly what it is and how it works. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.